the hormone responsible for the transformation from a little baby boy to a matured teenager is testosterone testosterone is secreted by the primary male reproductive organ known as the testes which is an endocrine gland now glands are under the control of the pituitary gland located in the brain which is the master gland now since the testes is also an endocrine gland it is under the control of the pituitary gland the anterior lobe of the pituitary secretes a hormone known as the luteinizing hormone or lh in short this hormone stimulates the testes to secrete a hormone known as testosterone so increase in luteinizing hormone would mean increased testosterone secretion from the testes now when does a boy reach the reproductive age well when he starts developing the male reproductive cell known as the sperm and that is generally at an age of 13 to 14 so why does it take so much of time why does it take 13 to 14 years to produce sperms well this is because first the testes needs to mature to be able to produce sperms now the production of sperms is also under the control of the pituitary gland but is the same hormone responsible for this is luteinizing hormone responsible for the production of sperms from the testes well no there is another hormone which is secreted from the anterior lobe of the pituitary known as the follicle stimulating hormone fsh in short which stimulates the testes to produce sperms so where in the testes is sperm produced let us see well this is what a testes looks like when you dissect it there are 200 to 300 compartments inside the testes known as the lobules now each lobule contains two to three highly coiled structures or tubules now tubules are the site of sperm generation see this is a picture of a dissected tubule and see these what you can see the yellow things are the sperms so from this picture it is confirmed that the tubules are the place where sperms develop this is how the male reproductive cell or the sperm looks like it has a head a mid piece and a long tail which facilitates in the movement the tail lashes and propels forward now let us see how sperms move see the tail facilitates in the movement now this movement requires a lot of energy so who provides the energy well look at this mid piece the mid piece has an abundant amount of mitochondria and we have discussed this before that mitochondria is the power house of the cell so since there are an abundant of mitochondria these mitochondria provide the energy 
for the sperms to swim about. So this is a female reproductive system. When a male and a female mates, then the male reproductive cells, that is the sperms, enter into the female's body through this part. Now this is the main reproductive organ in a female. It is known as the ovary. Now the ovary releases the female reproductive cell known as the egg. Now, if fertilization takes place, then the egg and the sperms fuse together in this pipe-like structure. Now, many sperms can enter into the female body, but the most viable and the most strong sperm will fuse with the female reproductive cell. This is the female reproductive cell. See, this sperm comes and for fusion, there is a part of the sperm known as the acrosome, which is a specialized lysosome that digests the wall of the female cell and facilitates the fusion. See, acrosome is present in the head region. This is the acrosome. It is a specialized lysosome which digests the membrane of the female reproductive cell facilitating fusion. Now see, this is a nucleus. So the head contains an acrosome and a nucleus. Now after sperms have been produced in these tubules, the sperms move along this highly coiled comma shaped structure that fits on a testes like a cap and is hence known as the epididymis where epi means top and didymis means testicles or testes. See the epididymis, this portion fits on the testicles or the testes like a cap. Now the tail of the epididymis turns upwards to form a sperm carrying duct known as the vas deferens. Vas means duct in Latin and deferens means to carry away. So it is a duct that carries away the sperms from the testes. The duct that ejects the semen into the urethra prior to ejaculation is known as the ejaculatory duct. Post the urinary bladder, the vast difference forms the urethra and this cylindrical muscular organ that you can see is known as the penis. Now for sperms to get matured and get ejected out of the body, it requires 10 to 14 days in the epididymis. Now for these 10 to 14 days, the sperm cells need to be kept alive. So who is responsible for increasing the survivability of the sperms. Let us see. Well, there are many accessory glands in a male body that helps in increasing the viability or the lifespan of a sperm. See the first accessory gland, this one which is present at the back and towards the base of the urinary bladder is known as the seminal vesicle. The seminal vesicle secretes an alkaline sugary fluid known as the semen. And this semen provides energy to the sperm cells. 
next look at this organ this gland this gland is known as the prostrate gland and it is situated at the base of the urinary bladder this prostrate gland facilitates a secretion which helps in sperm motility or the movement of sperms and also its viability that is its survival and finally the third accessory gland that helps in the sperm survival is known as the cowper's gland and the cowper's gland secrete mucus to lubricate the penis now the primary reproductive organ is the organ that produces the male or the female reproductive cells and the secondary reproductive organ is one which helps in the fusion of these male and female reproductive cells now can you identify which is the primary reproductive organ in case of a man well yes testes is the primary reproductive organ in males because it produces the male reproductive cell or the sperm and all these organs form the secondary reproductive system because they help in the union of the female reproductive cell and the male reproductive cell 